they're fierce. Oh my god! That car is flying! Intense, destructive, and dangerous. Hurricanes. Oh my god, go, 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 go. A massive threat each year. We're likely to see water still well above normal, even if not record warm. The hot water in the Atlantic and Caribbean fueling powerful storms. Oh, whoa. Florida's Big Bend struck by a Category 3 hurricane. The Gulf is completely out of its banks. Idalia, the strongest storm in more than 130 years to hit the area. An intensity that is growing. We're in sort of a new new world where the strongest storms are really unprecedented. Every season reminding us we cannot take this menace lightly. When hurricane season comes, yeah, we're nobody's gonna, we're not gonna play around with it. The 2024 Atlantic hurricane season is here. And your weather authority team is making sure you are prepared. With guidance, expertise, and the expectations you need to know. This is staying storm safe in hot water. Sponsored by FPL. At FPL, we're dedicated to keeping you safe and informed throughout the storm season. Learn more at fpl.com slash storm. And by All American Roofing, the roofing company you can trust. It's hurricane season again, and we're heading offshore. All right, let's go. Ready. Keeping an eye on everything happening all around us. Local 10 is here to keep you storm safe through it all. I'm Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis. And I'm Hurricane Specialist and Storm Surge Expert Mike Olari. We're here off the coast of Isla Mirada, and as the hurricane season ramps up, we're seeing record hot temperatures. This map shows us the extent of the unprecedented warmth. From the Gulf of Mexico to the coast of Africa, the water is warmer today than it typically is in August and September at the height of the hurricane season. Hurricanes are fueled by warm water, and the simple fact is, the hotter the water, the stronger a storm can get. Let's look back on 2023. It was an active hurricane season, more than half of it occupied by named storms. In fact, it ranked fourth for the most named storms in a single year. But for the first time in nearly a decade, South Florida was never in the cone. 2023. An above average hurricane season marked by unprecedented warmth in the Atlantic. And with the heat, come strength. Uh, the way we like to think of it is like when you go to the gas station um, and you have to choose which pump you're going to use, which octane of fuel you're going to use. Hurricanes like that high octane fuel and that's what warm waters are the equivalent of. Uh, they just keep the, the storm going, they inject it with energy. Counteracting one of the strongest El Ninos on record and surprising forecasters. Usually during El Nino years, we tend to say that activity will be suppressed. We won't have as many storms, uh, not as much to worry about. Uh, and in fact, this past year was quite the opposite. We actually got all the way up to the T-storm, uh, Tammy. Uh, so that, that's a lot of named storms for what's a El Nino year. So many that more than half of the six-month hurricane season was occupied by active storms, chart-topping ocean heat fueling Category 5 Lee in the Atlantic and supercharging Hurricane Otis in the eastern Pacific. From a tropical storm to a Category 5 in less than 24 hours. Otis striking Acapulco head on with catastrophic consequences. Warm waters can fuel rapid intensification or fast strengthening. Um, and that particular storm fed off those waters and rapidly intensified just before it made landfall in Acapulco. Otis blowing away forecasts, prompting National Hurricane Center meteorologists to call the storm a nightmare scenario. Robbie Berg, senior hurricane specialist with the National Hurricane Center, says Otis should remind South Floridians it can happen here. It has been a long time since the major part of the metro area. If people remember those storms, it's a wake up call that while well, we've been lucky to not get direct impact, um, this year or the year after that may not be our lucky year. Oh. 
blow. And it did happen here in the Sunshine State. The Gulf is completely out of its face. Category 3 Hurricane Idalia striking Taylor County. Storm surge up to 12 feet. No! Oh. Four people dying in Florida when the storm flooded coastal towns and cities along Florida's Big Bend and all the way to southwest Florida. Well, this part of the state hasn't necessarily seen, seen a storm like this in quite some time. That car is flying! It was the strongest hurricane to hit this part of the Gulf Coast since the 1890s. People were stranded in their houses and couldn't get out. I can't believe this. I've never seen nothing like it. Idalia took advantage of some of the warmest waters ever recorded in the Gulf of Mexico. The whole downtown is just desolation. I don't think anybody expected it to be quite this bad. An estimated two and a half billion dollars in damage left behind. As we begin yet another hurricane season, record high water temperatures remain across the Atlantic's main development region where most of the strongest hurricanes form. But this season, forecasters say El Nino won't stick around to help counteract all that warmth. Storms absolutely have the potential to rapidly intensify like an Otis uh, before they strike the United States. The after effects of a storm like that would be incredible. Not just the damage that it would, that would incur, uh, but just the, the, the way that society functions. Uh, we would probably be without power for days, if not weeks. While forecasts for the season can't tell us when or where a hurricane might strike in 2024, the growing threat for rapidly strengthening storms like Otis teach us time isn't always on our side. These events can be very dangerous and the timeline that we have to prepare could be very condensed. Which means having your hurricane plan in place now and knowing where you'll go before you need to evacuate is the best defense against the next big one that comes our way. Otis, so devastating for Mexico that its name has been retired by the World Meteorological Organization. That's the group that oversees the rotating list of storm names. 